We're asked to find the sum of the first six terms of the geometric series, whose third term is 27, and whose sixth term is eight. Then we're asked to find how many terms must be used if the sum is to be within one-tenth of a percent of the infinite sum. To find the sum of the first six terms, we'll determine r, then find a sub one, and then find the partial sum. To find r, we'll use the formula a sub n equals a sub one times r to the power of n minus one. Because the formula requires a sub one, we will temporarily pretend that a sub one is 27, and if 27 was a sub one, notice eight would be a sub four. And therefore, we'll use the formula in the form a sub four equals a sub one times r to the power of four minus one, which is three. And now we substitute eight for a sub four, 27 for a sub one, and solve for r. This gives us the equation eight equals 27 times r cubed. Next, we divide both sides by 27. Simplifying, we have r cubed equals eight twenty-sevenths. Next, to solve for r, we take the cube root of both sides, or raise both sides to the one-third power. I'm gonna take the cube root. The cube root of r squared is r. The cube root of eight twenty-sevenths is two-thirds. So now we know r is equal to two-thirds. The next step is to determine the real a sub one, the first term of the given geometric series. So this is the real a sub one, this is the real a sub three, and this is the real a sub six. To determine a sub one, we will use the same formula, a sub n equals a sub one times r to the power of n minus one, and we can use either a sub three or a sub six. Let's go ahead and use a sub three which means the formula will be a sub three equals a sub one times r to the power of three minus one is two. And now we substitute 27 for a sub three, two thirds for r, and solve for a sub one. This gives us the equation 27 equals a sub one times the square of two thirds. The square of two thirds is four ninths. 27 equals four ninths times a sub one. To solve for a sub one, we multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of four ninths, which is nine fourths. On the right, nine fourths times four ninths is equal to one. One times a sub one is a sub one. On the left, nothing simplifies. Nine fourths times 27 is 243 fourths. And now we can finally determine the sum of the first six terms using the partial sum formula shown here below. S sub six is equal to, in the numerator we have a sub one times the quantity one minus r to the power of n, which is 243 fourths times the quantity one minus two thirds to the sixth. The denominator is one minus r, which is one minus two thirds. And now let's go to the calculator to evaluate this. As a decimal, we have 166.25, or as a fraction, 665 fourths. I'm gonna go ahead and use the fraction. And now let's work on determining how many terms must be used if the partial sum is to be within one-tenth of a percent of the infinite sum. First, notice that one-tenth of a percent as a fraction is equal to one thousandth. And therefore, to answer the question, we need to solve the inequality. The infinite sum minus the partial sum is less than or equal to one thousandth times the infinite sum. And our goal here is to determine the value of n, which gives us the number of terms. Even though we have an inequality here, let's set this up as an equation. We have the infinite sum minus the partial sum is equal to one thousandth times the infinite sum. Let's first simplify the left side. Notice how we do have a common denominator. So if we focus on the numerator, we have a sub one 
And then because of the subtraction, we can distribute negative a sub one, which gives us minus a sub one, and then plus a sub one r to the power of n. And notice how a sub one minus itself simplifies to zero. The left side simplifies to a sub one r to the power of n all over one minus r. We'll leave the right side alone for right now. For the next step, let's make the right side a constant by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of the infinite sum formula, which is the quantity one minus r divided by a sub one. Simplifying on the right, notice how we're left with just one thousandth. On the left, one minus r divided by itself simplifies to one, and so does a sub one divided by a sub one. So now we have the equation, r to the power of n is equal to one thousandth. From here, we know the value of r is two thirds. Remember, we found that in the first step, and therefore the equation becomes two thirds to the power of n equals one thousandth. Notice how here we're solving for n, and it's in the exponent, and therefore we'll have to use logarithms in order to solve for n. Let's take the common log of both sides of the equation, which gives us the common log of two-thirds to the power of n equals the common log of one-thousandth. On the left side, we apply the power property of logarithms. The log of two-thirds to the nth is equal to n times the log of two-thirds equals, now you may recognize the right side is equal to negative three, since one thousandth is equal to 10 to the power of negative three, the common log of 10 to the power of negative three is just negative three. Let's assume we don't recognize that. Let's just leave it as log one thousandth. And now we divide both sides by log two-thirds. Simplifying we have n is equal to the quotient on the right, which requires a calculator. And we get approximately 17.04. But of course, we can't use a decimal value for the value of n. Remember, n is a number of terms, and we can't round down to 17, because if we do, the error is going to be more than 1,000th times the infinite sum and therefore we have to round up to 18. So it'll take 18 or more terms in order for the partial sum to be within one-tenth of a percent of the infinite sum. Let's write this out as a sentence. I hope you found this helpful.